dive, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for joining us for a Talk Dive Live, the place where we get to snack on scuba snacks, we get to double dip, we get to talk diving, even in this time of being locked in our homes and going nuts with Netflix. I think I've had enough of Netflix. But enough of that. We've got some cool panelists. We've got some new panelists. Uh, please, while we're actually introducing our new panelists, let us know where you're signing in from today. We always love to hear from you. We've had some really cool ones lately. We've had Australia. We've had Israel. We've had Alaska. Um, and we've had just across the street. So um, once again, to our lovable, huggable David, he actually took a shower this time, ladies and gentlemen, which means he's super excited. So say hi, David. Hello, I did take a shower. I saw no fish, so I'm glad to be here to talk about scuba diving. There you go. We haven't been in the water yet. We're all anxious to do that giant stride. Uh, we also have uh, the young lady that the color is named after, Sienna. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How you doing? And we've got a new person. Thank you very much. And we're going to actually have to ask you to tell us a little something about yourself to Tall Taylor. <laughs> hey guys, hey everyone. Um, my name's Taylor, originally from California. I spent a lot of time uh, working in the scientific field, uh, doing scientific diving, and happy to be a new member to Rainbow Reef, just recently moving out here uh, in January. So, hey everyone. Cool. Love to take a look at that underwater chemistry set. So, uh, today we're going to talk, first of all, we have had a caption this photo contest going on in the last couple days we're going to show you the photo uh you've still got some time so if you will put in sign in caption this photo to win a free dive trip yes when we're open uh we will have a free dive trip for the person who best captions these two people um i'm going to say that they're uh singing pearl fishers and that's only going to be funny for people that actually knows that there's an opera called Pearl Fishers. So I guess that's not really very funny, except for like the two people. Anyway, uh, moving right along. So we will find out who that is at the end of the cast. Yes, we will. Um, but before then, again, go ahead, let us know where you're you're signing in from i almost said call again uh, let us know where you're signing in from so we can say hi uh, there have been several people from um from all over several alumni and several idc candidates see there we go hello from st lucia <laughs> bob thank you very much you know what if i had ju judge judy's legs i would cover them up as well um and Stacy Hanout, speaking of uh, alumni and the IDC, so today we thought that we would talk about our IDC. Hey, Herb, uh, and what it takes maybe to take the IDC and also portions of the IDC. Uh, we actually have some people who have signed on who are in our very own Zoom IDC. Yes, we can do virtual training right now during this, this viral time. Um, so hello to all of you guys. Uh, we've got some interesting news coming up, hopefully. Um, but let's talk, let's go ahead and talk about IDC. So, uh, hey, Nicole. Um, so, David, first and foremost, and I know that you came down here not that long ago. What was the underlying motivation, shall we say, that, that helped you um, decide that you were going to break out of whatever you were doing and come down and do an instructive development course? Well, I had wanted to become an instructor for a very long time and never thought it was sort of the practical thing to do. And I changed my mindset and decided uh, it's the thing I want to do. I did a lot of research. I tend to be very uh, intense about researching things uh, before I make a choice. And uh, it was clear to me that the place I wanted to come down to do my dive master and my IDC and MSDT, which we can talk about, uh, was here. So I came down here in June and uh, I am very, very happy that I did. It was a great experience. Cool. Cool. Excellent. Now, um, uh, speaking of, ex of experience, uh, Sienna, you were one of our interns and I know that you did the intern track um, without going into what the internship is, because we're going to say that for when we've got John Buckley, our very own uh, intern uh, head. Um, Tell us something about the IDC that was maybe 
a little eye opener, something that you didn't think you knew before, something maybe or something that you discovered that you didn't think you were going to be able to do, but through some guidance, through, through some training, uh, hi, Carlos, uh, you were. The, uh, I'd say the main thing I was nervous about going into the IDC, seeing other instructors or other interns kind of go through it when they were doing their training was the uh, physics and dive theory portion of it because math is not my strong suit, neither is theory, but it actually is not bad at all. Very simple. And Taylor actually helped me a lot with that. So it was something that I thought was going to be very difficult and I was going to struggle with, but it was not horrible at all. Very good to hear. Very good to hear. As a matter of fact, it is one of those things that uh, people are worried about, but it is something that is very doable. In fact, I believe Linky here has an idea. You see, there's something that's called Patty Dive Theory Online. It's not that we don't want to teach you. It's just that we can get you some extra help. And not only that, you can do this Patty Dive Theory Online during your dive master course that's going to be your dive master portion of the theory in which case you don't need to do the theory portion of the dive master because you've done the dive master e-learning online but because we've got linky here he wanted to let us know or are you a she today no he's a he with very beautiful eyes he wanted to let us know that if you use the dive theory online during the dive master course you can link that see there's that word to the instructor development course, and that can also help and constitute for one of those scores. So that's a very helpful tip. Thank you very much, Linky. So Taylor, uh, being the scientist, you probably had a rather simple time with the physics and you probably did it metrically because uh, scientists don't tend to be empirically or metrically challenged. Um, what would be your, if you had to think of one section of the IDC that you really thought was cool, what would you say? Yeah, you're definitely right. I mean, with a scientific background, we've definitely always worked in the metric. So uh, wasn't wasn't too big of an issue. Uh, I really did enjoy the physics and the theory part. Um, one part that I thought was really cool that I don't know if I would say I was surprised, but I wasn't necessarily expecting as much is the team building that goes on um, and showing how important it is to work as a team um, throughout the IDC. So I thought that was really important um, and a really cool surprise feature for me wonderful wonderful thank you taylor yes uh if you're just joining us uh please go ahead and let us know where you're signing in from we'd like to say hello to you like to know where you are don't forget we've got a prize of a free dive trip yes that's a free dive trip for the best caption of a photo that happens to be right here sorry other side <laughs> uh, so yes, if you can caption this, um, then and and we we think it's the the coolest caption, then you will win a free dive trip as soon as our gates are open and we are once again able to dive freely into the ocean and see the beautiful critters that are down there. Um, I I think that they're trying to see how the echo works. Echo, 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 because you know of course underwater it works really well. Um, so yes, Taylor was saying, and sorry, so what we're talking about today is the instructor development course and becoming an instructor. And David was mentioning uh, the, the time in his life that he, he was ready to become an instructor. And then Taylor was just talking about the fact that uh, he really liked the, the group sessions of the, the IDC, the times that we get to work together. Because remember, when we're learning how to dive and we're, we're learning how to dive, we do it with other people usually. Um, but we we only have to really worry about ourselves well when we're learning how to teach how to dive we've got to be able to work with those groups and work with those people so quite frequently we actually train in groups so that we can learn that group mentality type of thing um, so that we can well like i like to say steal from the good so the good ones create the great ones steal so steal other people's tricks right Surround yourself with, with people that have some really good tricks. Go ahead, steal them, share them, let people do them. Let's hope we can't get our IDCs. Yes, Benjamin, let's hope we get our IDCs or NRIEs done um, this year. As a matter of fact, it's a very good point. Uh, right now, the only thing 
other than waiting for the keys to open, it will be getting an examiner down here that will have to be able to travel during, most likely we would need to be in the phase three, perhaps the phase two, but um, as a matter of fact, in just a few minutes, we might be able to catch somebody who might know something more about this. Um, before we do, I would like to go back to David. And David, can you tell us what do you think was the most challenging other than the theory, which I, you know, I know, theory, 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 I just call it translation. But what would you say would have been the most challenging aspect of your instructor development course? You know, um, everybody in my group sort of would have a different answer to that. Um, so basically, there's three major components of the IDC uh, and other stuff too, but it's basically learning how to teach the knowledge development and that's essentially in the classroom, learning how to teach in confined water, which is the pool, and learning how to teach uh, in open water. And I think different people found different aspects of those more or less challenging, depending on their experience. Um, the one thing that I thought was a little bit challenging that covers all three of those, though, is there's a very specific uh, PADI system that you learn and that there are certain points that you want to hit in every lesson and uh, sort of there's times when you want to make the points. Just to give you a quick example, uh, you always, if you're teaching a skill like mass clearing or regulator recovery, you want to make sure that you talk about the value of that skill. And that's sort of a very easy and obvious one for, for me and for anyone who's in that because we've already been doing it. But there's other things too that we had to learn how to integrate into our different presentations. So I think that was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, the other thing I think that we were all very scared of, but then turned out to be really not a big problem at all, was uh, the instructor exam itself. You just mentioned having an examiner, and I think there's a lot of anxiety around what's going to happen on that weekend. And uh, the three of us are here to tell you that we all made it. So uh, it's actually not so bad if you're well prepared as we were at Rainbow Reef. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, as we like to say here at Rainbow Reef, the IE, um, which is actually the instructor examination, or that's what most people think, we say it's it's easy. Oh, so we've got Mr. Coons um, who would like to know what the prerequisite is to enroll into a PADI IDC. That's a very good Good question. Um, if only there was someone that was a regional training consultant that could actually answer that question. Um, but so in order to meet the prerequisite for joining an IDC, one needs to be a dive master. You don't need to be a paddy dive master, but you do need to be a dive master or an assistant instructor. And I say that because the IDC is really two components. It's the assistant instructor and the open water scuba instructor. So for instance, if you're an instructor for another training organization and you would like to take the PADI IDC, you would only need to take the open water scuba instructor portion of the IDC because you already know how to teach for at least one organization. We just need to get the PADI pedagogy and all the programs. And just so you know, pedagogy is not something dirty with your feet. But if you're a dive master and you've, which, by definition means that you've got 60 dives, then you can enroll as the prerequisite is met into an IDC. Once that happens, you will have to have 100 dives in order to actually go to the IE. Now, if you're enrolled in a six week course, which means you've got master scuba diver trainer as part of your IDC, and you're doing the course with a CDC, and that's just a whole lot of letters right now, I know, but a CDC is a career development center, which we are, uh, then you can go to the IE with fewer than 100 dives as long as we certify you as an assistant instructor, which as I mentioned, assistant instructor is one component of the two component IDC, right? So Bob, I hope that helps and I hope that you get your open water course done soon so that you can start your, your journey at the IDC because one of the other things is you have to be a certified diver for at least six months and of course you need to be 18 because you have to be 18 in order to be a dive master. So thank you, Bob. That was an excellent, excellent question. Uh, Taylor, let's, let's go to you. Um, 
when when we're doing the IDC, we learn all kinds of different techniques. Can you tell me? Do, do you have any kind of, of of interest? Do you have any kind of gear that you had to learn how to work around for the for the IDC when teaching? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the, I mean, this kind of touches on what David was talking about earlier and how there's specific things that have to be hit while teaching. Uh, so the one piece of gear that was new for me to kind of operate and work around was the instructor slates. Um, I mean, the course directors literally day one of IDC had told us to grab those instructor slates and write down, uh, read your slate. Remember to read through that slate so we uh, make sure we hit each of those points that David was talking about earlier um, to make sure every everything is hit and followed through with detail. Ah, read your slates. Yes, it's one of those things that when they're right in front of you and sometimes you still don't do it. Uh, yeah, you know, again, those slates are there really just to help you and to remind you of what to say so you don't forget things. Um, but if you're not used to using them, then that would be something that you would want to get into a motor skill, which is one of the components of the IDC is working on motor skills, right? Um, so if you're just joining us, please let us know from where you're joining. We'd love to hear from you. Um, sign in. If you haven't seen it already, we have a fill in this caption photo of two fish on a reef um, who are, you know, well, it's kind of like the double fish oh, and the look. But caption this for us, because if you do, you could win a free dive trip here in the Keys with Rainbow Reef. Yes. Um, one of the other things that, that we talk about during the IDC, of course, is gear because there's gear that we dive with and there's gear that we teach with, right? One of the things that a lot of people are doing nowadays is going to an air source. This goes right onto your BC. And then if somebody does need something, you would switch over from your primary, take it out of your mouth and go to your air source. Well, right now, during this period of time, Patty and Dan both are recommending that we not teach in that manner of switching over to an air source and then handing our primary. Instead, they're recommending that everybody have an actual octopus. So if you are somebody that has an air source, you might want to consider just having an octopus so that you've got it still in the triangle of safety between shin and the top of your hips um, so that you can pass that off. Remember during this period of time as well that it is a downstream valve or a downstream which means that no cooties are gonna go up into your first stage. So that's okay. The only thing that you would wanna consider is, especially, or because you're in a pool, you've got chlorine, so that would do most of the disinfecting of a mouthpiece. But afterwards, if you are actually giving it and donating it to one of your divers or one of your students, and you don't know them, then by all means, go ahead and clean that off. Steramine doesn't actually sanitize, it sterilizes. So you might wanna use something, maybe a low, low grade Clorox, like one, one to 100 parts Clorox with water and just put that, that mouthpiece in or buy a new mouthpiece or have your student buy a new mouthpiece. So that's just an interesting thing. So uh, Sienna, uh, can you tell us what is your favorite skill that you got to do during the IDC? I love skills. Uh, that's a good one. I think one of my favorite skills I did during the IDC was um, removing and replacing your gear underwater because that is a challenging skill, but it's helpful to know. So it was fun to practice it and kind of perfect it uh, to the teaching level. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, that was one of those skills that in 2014, when the new Patty Open Water Diver course was introduced, we all jumped in the pool to make sure that we could find a way to do it fintipoli. And then we were told we didn't have to, which wasn't any fun because it's more fun to do things fintipoli. That's the, about the only skill that Patty will say on an insensitive bottom, which I think is just unfortunate for people that have rashes to perform that skill. Uh, I think one of my favorite skills, especially with the signal that I use, is the free flow regulator. Besides the fact that I like to say free flow regulator, uh, I like that because if you have it at the IE, you get to say, you watch me 
because that's my signal for free flow regulator. <laughs> um, David, speaking about signals, what's your favorite signal? And and everybody out there, what what's your favorite signal for maybe a fish, maybe a, a skill, uh, any anything like that? Just ways that you can communicate underwater. Unless you can sign, you're going to have to find some ways of communicating underwater, right? So let us know what your favorite signal is underwater. Um, you may not be able to give it to us, or maybe you need to take a little video and send it to us. Go ahead. But David, what's yours? So I always like to make it clear that two, sim, uh, two signals that look very similar are actually very different because I'm looking for both of these. One is a cowfish and one is a lobster. So for a cowfish, my signal is this. And for a lobster, my signal is that. And that's cowfish's horns are up here and the lobster's out with its uh, antennae out there. So. Uh, so, but I, I could possibly get those confused, so maybe I need to do better. I don't know. I like it. I like it. Yeah, a lot of people have some really interesting, wait, yes? Sorry, we've just got some breaking news. We have a roving reporter is, a roving reporter is in the house. Is This is true. Um, for those of you do, that don't believe that I'm actually talking to somebody, I am. Our producer is telling me that our very own man of many hats, without a hat today, is on camera. DJ, how you doing today? I'm all right. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. And Tiago, too. Poor Iguana. Be right back. So this just in, when squirrels and iguanas run, so does Tiago. Yes. Um, let's go to Taylor while we wait for our roving reporter to find and leash his dog, because that's what he will probably do. Um, Taylor, tell me something. When you taught your first open water course, what was going through your head? So interesting question because I've yet to teach one. Um, I was hired on just after finishing my MSDT prep, uh, finished all of the training on Sunday uh, to then get all of this COVID information that uh, we shut down Monday. So unfortunately I have not had the luxury of being able to teach an open water student yet. Well, there you go. Uh, he, he just mentioned that he also did the MSDT prep. The MSDT is the Master Scuba Diver Trainer, and then we call it prep because Master Scuba Diver Trainer is when we take an instructor and we teach them at least five different specialty instructor ratings. And five, because to be a Master Scuba Diver Trainer, you need to have five PADI specialty instructor ratings and have issued 25 certifications. So if you have those five specialties that have already been taught to you by a course director, you can start teaching those specialties right away, which is pretty cool because if you link everything, and I know that my little friend Linky is, is curled up in that seagrass going, <laughs> if you link your courses with just five divers, you could literally get your, or earn your 25 issued certifications. Um, so Taylor, sorry to hear about that, but I'll tell you what, those of you that, that are listening, uh, if you're looking at going into the, the instructor program or um, even just the dive master and then later the instructor, or if you're a new instructor, one of the best things to do is teach an advanced course or specialties first because they're certified divers. Oh, I see that we've got our raging, ro roving reporter. DJ, what do you got for us? Ah, well, I, I just wanted to cover with everybody uh, real fast. Um, the number one question we always seem to get, uh, probably on the top of the list, even though we hit all the other questions, is uh, when we're going to reopen. Um, so wanted to get everybody kind of as up to date on that as we can. You know, a couple of weeks ago, probably in our area, your area, everybody's area, it's you know, things were still kind of uncertain. Certainly four weeks ago, you know, there was a whole different, you know, who knows what was going to happen. So as we're marching forward, um, you probably have seen on Facebook and things, we're, we're painting stuff. We're, we're kind of getting everything ready to 
uh, reopen, and it looks like in about uh, seven to ten days we're going to be ready to open for locals uh, because the Florida Keys is still closed to visitors, and um, you know we're hoping that that status changes pretty soon. the The Florida Keys are in phase one. Um, and part of the problem is, is that Miami and Broward County, which is where Fort Lauderdale is and West Palm were the hardest hit in Florida with the virus. So, uh, they're a little reticent to get us open because we get a lot of visitors from, uh, you know, Miami and those places. So we're hoping that, um, you know, the, the date that the keys set. Uh, quite a few weeks ago was June 1st that they would reopen. So uh, I guess the point that we would want to impress upon people is if you could generally start to plan for, you know, probably early June, we'll be able to uh, have visitors once again from outside of the Keys. Uh, and we're going to try to keep you up to date on each show how that's progressing. But again, just to review real quick, we think think we'll be able to have visitors on or after June 1st uh, from outside the Keys. We think in about 7 to 10 days we'll be able to uh, get some practice in for all of our, our outside the Keys customers uh, with some of our uh, locals that uh, have expressed a bunch of interest in going diving. So uh, we're going to kind of keep it local for the next couple of weeks, but we think we're going to be ready for you starting in June. And if they push that forwards or backwards we'll uh we'll let you know immediately oh <laughs> well, we're back that was great news dj yes we understand that nothing is set in stone um everything is about as clear as mud when it comes to uh, the information that we're getting from the the governor's man the governor's oh, mansion but the governor's office and other entities that are telling us the information uh, but thank you dj very much for keeping us up to date on that and uh, and as promised yes i almost forgot um you know i'm, I'm kind of we mostly get the questions about when can we go diving again i guess i was remiss i know this show was uh some of it was focused on the idc itself so we would try to, uh, obviously, I know you're talking to Patty Ross, but we're probably trying to align, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're probably trying to align our first uh, instructor exam uh, up in sometime in June, uh, and we'll be letting all the IDC candidates that are already signed up just wait and chopping at the bit to get uh, to do their instructor class. We also hope that that could literally start uh, in the first few days of June. Yes, and it's it. We're going to take our key off of of the hotels and, of course, the the top of the keys being opened up, so that we can actually congregate uh, and get together and do an IDC. But yes, that's exactly what we're looking at doing. So you heard it. Soft opening June. Um, we will keep everybody uh, in contact. We'll keep everybody apprised of the information as we've got it. Um, those of you that are actually doing an IDC on Zoom with me now, you, you heard it. Uh, I will be getting information to everybody, however, that is also uh, signed up to be joining us June, July, August, um, so that we can set things up as soon as we hear from Patty about the IE schedule or being able to send somebody down for the IE, then we will be able to start actually putting some dates in books. Uh, we can't promise anything right now, but that's at the very least the most the most up-to-date in information that we've got. Thank you and as, very much, DJ. As you said, it's clear as mud, but actually it's getting clearer. And that's really the message here, that it's it's starting to clear up. Uh, it, it's we're, we're getting close to really being able to, probably any day they're going to start to announce like more definitive information. So uh, we'll bring that to you when there we you have go. it. Excellent. There you go. Can like we make the pool. You just got to wait. Yes, uh, uh, excellent question, uh, Carlos. Yeah, I guess I could have said that better at the beginning. Uh, we can make reservations um, for pretty much any time in June. I would probably suggest not June 1st. Uh, but, again, any reservation that you make, 
is super easy to move. There, it's a no-risk reservation. You don't have to make a deposit. You don't have to pay for the hotel. There's nothing you're paying for in advance for any diving reservations. So if you want to make them the first weekend of June, you know, that, that might be cutting it close in terms of, you know, for sure. But, um, you know, again, if you made them today, uh, as we get uh, more clear information about exactly when we can reopen uh, the keys, because I, I guess the easiest way to say it is when that roadblock goes up, we got the dive boats ready to go. We are, we're taking you diving. So you can make your reservations today, tomorrow. You can wait a week, uh, but they're no risk. You're not going to have to spend any money now, um, and there is no deposits or anything. And if you have to move it or cancel it, again, no risk uh, and no worries. Uh, that's it's pretty much how it always is here, but just in case you didn't know that, uh, you can make what amounts to a, 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 a no risk. I can't even say fully refundable because we're not taking any money. It's a no risk reservation. So we'd love to hear from you, um, and hopefully we can take you diving real soon. I, I think I, I can almost hear the captain saying, "Dive, dive, dive." I hear it. It's yeah. coming. We're coming to it, folks. <laughs> Thank you, DJ. This is some wonderful, wonderful information. Uh, for more information, please do call us at 305-451-7171. If you'd like information on the IDC, you can do that toll free at 866-IDC. That's 866-539-7432. So thank you very much, DJ. We'll let you go. We understand that you got to tend to Tiago. We thank you very much for your this breaking news that you brought to us. Uh, this should at least lighten all of our, our hearts a little bit and get us going towards our dive gear bags to start practicing and packing our dive gear so that we can get it out there. Um, so uh, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we do have the challenge that we're going to announce at right after we get a couple more scuba snacks um, of who has the best caption on our fish of the day. That is the fish caption du jour. Um, so yes, Gail made my day too. Yay! Um, so before we do though, we got to get, we got to triple dip. We're going to triple dip on the uh, scuba snack. <laughs> so um, David, when you start teaching again and you can get out there and dive, what is the one critter that you're going to want to show your students, if you can? Um, you know, there's lots of sort of rare critters that are always fun to try to find or look for. But because one of my absolute favorite, favorite fish uh, is something that's out there on most dives, still my favorite. I love the scrawled file fish. I think it's so beautiful. It's a little funny looking too, but it's just really gorgeous fish. And uh, that is probably one of my favorites to show people. And I can't wait to see those scrawled file fish again. They're usually out there. Nice, nice. And don't forget, let us know what your favorite fish is that you'd like to see when you come down, uh, hopefully in June. You heard it. You heard it from the man himself. Uh, if I were a betting man, which um, I'm, I'm not because I'm not allowed to. Uh, but if I were, I would go with it, with June, at least mid-June and, and move it on. Um, so, yes. Uh, let's see. Sienna, what is the coolest fish or critter or thing? that you might have seen during a training dive. I know you've been doing some training dives. Um, and if you didn't see anything cool during a training dive, that's okay. But what's the coolest thing you saw? Let us know. What? 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 Uh, the coolest thing I saw on a training dive was actually when I was doing a night dive adventure dive for an advanced open water class. And we got to see dolphins swim by, which was really cool. We were not expecting it. You don't get to see dolphins underwater very often down here. So the fact that we saw four or five dolphins swim by during a night dive was really, really cool. That is cool. I love the fact that you can never really tell where and what direction anything or sound is coming from when it's underwater. So whenever you hear the squeak of dolphins, you always see people, uh, divers do.
I love seeing dolphins and, and just hearing them play. Um, all right, Taylor. So we know that you haven't taught an open water diver course yet, but when you get out there, what is going to be your favorite site to show your students? Tell us your favorite site down here in the Florida Keys. So my favorite site is actually one of uh, the wreck of the Benwood. Uh, the reason being is I love macro life um, and I've never dove the wreck of the Benwood and not seen one of my favorite critters, uh, which is the spotted drum. I've been pretty lucky and actually had three juveniles and a full adult spotted drum sitting right under um, one of those things. So being able to see the spotted drums at the wreck of the Benwood, it's a really, really cool thing that I'm looking forward to. Cool, yes. Spotted drums are really cool. They keep good time too. Um, and Carl's absolutely, seahorses are one of my favorite things and obviously Linky's favorite things. I mean, let's face it. Um, so thank you very much everybody for joining us. I think we've come to that point of the show where we get to find out who gets a free dive trip maybe as early as June. Yes, you heard it from the man with many hats who wasn't wearing a hat today. But as early as June, we could be diving. The pool will be open, and we're going to hear them yell, dive, dive, dive. So there it is again. Caption this photo to win a free dive trip. What is the best caption out there? Can you show us, Carlos? Who has won the free dive trip? Who? Who? Wow. Carlos. <laughs> Timothy, congratulations. That's fantastic. Yes, I like that one. And good timing too, right? So Timothy, uh, we will send you a FaceTime link for that free drive trip. That is so cool. You are that much closer to a giant stride after hearing dive, dive, dive. Uh, so once again, <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this half hour of scuba snacks and fun talk about diving. Uh, it was a little bit more on or it was all on the instructor course or the instructional portions of things. Um, but I think there was some really cool information. And, you know, if that's something that's that's just been itching out to you, you know, maybe I should do it. Go ahead. Do it. Give us a call. Uh, we're happy to help because we love teaching whatever it is here, um, especially, however, the instructor course. So from from me, that's Ross, uh, here at Rainbow Reef, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, David, Taylor, Sienna, thank you for joining us today. Uh, our roving reporter, DJ, thank you very much. And of course, let's not forget Linky, who is always here to give us some new insight into the PADI system. So dive, dive, dive. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know Thanks, where you're everybody. from. See you next time. Bye, guys.